Okay, and we are back and we are making waves day two after lunch. And you would think things would start slowing down here at DevSec Atlantic, but you know what? They're not. There's people still in great conversations. You can tell people are eager to get back at business, excited, quite frankly, to be back in person in a trade show. One of the coolest booths at DevSec right now is Modestry. They've really stepped up their game. They've got a whole corner section over there. It's inviting. There's a little lounge there. It's fantastic. I can't wait to get into the conversation with Modestry right now. Emily, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Emily Smits. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and also co-founder of Modestry, which is a Halifax-based company. Uh, we're predominantly in software development. We do a lot of digitalization focused on uh, manufacturing, aerospace and defense. And uh, we've really um, been able to grow locally. Uh, we started 10 years ago. And so it's been it's been a journey and we're happy to be here today at DevSec. Emily, how did you find yourself at this point in time? Where did you come from? Where did it all start? Well, I came from a, um, a commerce business background and then uh, myself and my business partner, we came together and looked at the industry from an area of what some of the efficiency and digitalization. So we started developing digital tools for focused on training aspect, focused on how you're going to create an immersive training and immersive scenarios. I first started out in the defense focused area for defense related training and then have since branched off as well into different areas so we cover a wide number of industries now I for from aerospace to defense to automotive to industrial manufacturing because really it uh, it encompasses a lot of the digitalization aspect from the training perspective but also how data comes into play when you're looking at areas like a digital twin mm -hmm. um, and looking at areas for um, how do you go in and put digitalization to your work instructions like your your digital work cards as we mm -hmm. say and um, so that's really an expansion that it has happened gradually over time on the digital tools as well as the service offerings that we provide at Monastery. So you're digitizing the workflow or the data that's been created in companies or both? So what we what we do is we, we focus a lot on how you have your, your 3D models and then the aspects that come with engaging with those, those 3D models from a training perspective or from an operational perspective. So a lot of the data flow that you, you get is associated with um, how you're going to, for example, as assemble or disassemble components, um, where you're going to get sensor information and integrate that into a visualization type of environment. And then we've also done um, work on digital work cards, which is more aligned with how do you take a PDF type of a document or instructional do documentation and then bring it into an interactive digital type of a realm. Mm -hmm. So we've been working a lot on um, what are those different disconnected data sets uh, that we can bring it into a cohesive digital ecosystem and uh, really uh, help with employee training and help with uh, the workforce as we move into more and more of a, of a digital focused age. It's incredibly wide ranging, isn't it? It's unbelievable, yeah. Is there a collision there between the gaming industry and the defense what well, would tell me about that a uh, that's a very interesting question because yeah. a lot of the um, you know aspects of, of technology and some of the the workforce as well at, at modestry it does have some synergies mm -hmm. with areas of uh, uh, game development so right. that if you're looking at software developers you know software development aspect then you can you can leverage some of the the skill sets that come with a, the gaming background type of environment and where modestry started is the the game development aspects uh, the my business partner as well come, came from a uh, gaming development okay. aspect and then was able to 
together apply some of the methodologies in how you're creating training focused not on you know the gaming aspect but on uh, training and mm -hmm. operational maintenance and so in our early days um, when we started 10 years ago then we were looking at how we take you know gaming technologies and apply some of that methodology into you know real life training scenarios yeah. in a virtual environment and so we we still have a number of um, software developers that come from really focused you know game development type of a background but really there's a lot of broad skills that come into play when you're talking about the full digitalization ecosystem mm -hmm. so we we have 3d modelers on staff we've got a wide range of software developers and then looking at also you know training development expertise and and then those that are uh, skilled in different projects and project management. Emily, that's a, <laughs> those are really interesting skills to bring into the defense industry for sure. Monastery must have a great team. Tell me a little bit about the team. Yeah, our team is predominantly focused in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So we we started in Halifax and um, have really tried to keep our our team focused in Atlantic Canada. Last year during the during the pandemic, we also opened an office in New Brunswick. So we have an office in New Brunswick that has staff and we're, we're continuing to grow that office as well. And then we have representation in, in Europe and also in the US because we have a lot of uh, exports that are focused on digital tools for manufacturing and for uh, large companies who are looking to really digitalize some of their their core processes for employees and also for selling to their customers. Yeah, Emily, when you were a young girl, I'm going to just deviate a little bit from the business side, but did you envision yourself leading a company like this? I'm just thinking of you speaking to some of the young ladies that are out there, you know, what, what motivated you to move in this direction? Well, you know, it's interesting how things evolve over time, right? I, I wouldn't say, like, I, I sought out to say I would like to co-found a software development company, yeah. um, you know, focus on different industries and really, you know, thriving in aerospace and, and defense as well. That wasn't, you know, kind of top of mind as you're going through. I, I started with a, a commerce-focused background, project development, and then and then got more into more of the operational aspects. When, and from an entrepreneurial nature, then you you continue to to grow and expand as things go forward. And you know, one of the things I would say is just be open to all the different avenues that are out there yeah. because there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot in this industry, yeah. and there's a lot on the um, digitalization focus. Yeah with many companies that are here and that are helping to accelerate how we're adopting technologies and how we're moving forward in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. I love the fact you have the business background. I did a business degree at Memorial and we've had a lot of engineers sitting here. Not to knock any engineers, but when we went through business school, we'd always have a little bit of rivalry with the engineering side. Of it. Right. So anyway, it's a pleasure having a business uh, commerce grad. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So Emily, uh, a lot of good things happening right now in the defense and the marine sector. I mean, the, it's really kind of exploding here in Canada. Yeah. and. Uh, you can, you can sense people are really eager to get down to it. Tell me about you know how you see the growth in this sector right now. Uh, it's a very interesting time for the sector right. because there's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot because of the national shipbuilding right. strategy and all of the spin-offs that, that happen associated with that. Modestry has, has worked uh, on providing immersive uh, applications that are used on Atlantic offshore patrol ships. Um, we are really engaged in that industry as well and we're seeing that overall the industry is growing right yeah. and that's really positive overall and it's growing on many different aspects uh, right in Canada right. so I've spoken with a number of you know, local companies as well on how they've been able to grow and it's it's quite inspiring how um, you can see that journey and I mean modesty is a part of that as well mm -hmm. because I mean we were we were just, uh, you know, a couple people, you know, 10 years ago and have now grown to, to be more of an international right. export focused and uh, company that is also located in mm -hmm. Atlantic Canada. What's, what's your total employee complement now approximately? Um, we're, we're growing in over 50, 55 now or yeah. 52 now and, and growing continually yeah. as we go along and uh, 
It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the rising a, tide lifts all boats. Hundred percent, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like, there's a lot of opportunities, right? With all of this growth in the sector, there's a lot of opportunities, and we're seeing right here that there's some really large tier one suppliers communicating with the small companies that are eager to kind of be a part of it. That monastery must be front and center in all of these conversations and how they can contribute to the overall shipbuilding strategy. Yeah, that's definitely a, a, a core point of engagement yeah. is the shipbuilding strategy right. and and how technology comes right. into play there and how there's a lot of collaboration also across the mm, industry when you're collaborating yeah. with the with the shipyards or you're yeah. collaborating with other you know SMEs on providing technology tools and yeah. and how that can really propel the industry forward. Emily, you, I want to pick up on the word collaboration because we hear that a lot with a lot of the people we talk to it's all about collaboration what is it about Atlantic Canada that makes us want to collaborate so much we really want to work together what is it about that I think one of the aspects that makes it a, a collaborative type of environment is that there there's a growth focus mm -hmm. and there's an understanding that there is a, a lot going on in the industry and that we could do right. more together right. and there's also a variety of skill sets which have good synergies across the board in order mm -hmm. to provide more uh, in unification with others. Yeah, it's an exciting time to be here, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it really is an exciting time to be in this moment, in the shipbuilding, in the marine, in the defense sector. There's a lot of good things over the horizon. You said that you were on the Arctic offshore patrol ships. Are you got involvement with that, did you mention? Yes, so there was a, a, an announcement before made yep. um, with, in collaboration of providing the uh, a virtual training solution, okay. which is under uh, Irving provided right. that with uh, for and uh, for us it was through MAN Energy Solutions. Okay. So providing immersive experience, we provide also uh, training scenarios to a variety of defense yeah. contractors, right. and also in, in the shipbuilding industry. That's a you know, core area of collaboration as well. Have you, uh, have you been on board the Arctic Offshore Patrol ships yet? Have you? I have not. Yeah. So I'd encourage that and go down and meet some of the people that are kind of getting the results of your technology, going through your training. You'd be so amazed and you look into their eyes and how excited they are to be walking on Canada's latest, uh, you know, greatest platform. You're a big part of that. That must make you feel good. Well, when you when you go down and experience what's going on, you know, locally mm -hmm. or in the shipyard, it's really interesting to see all of the, the local providers that have been a, a part of that together on how the strategy really encompasses across Canada and uh, what the industry is able to provide together. Jerry, your final thoughts? You know, it's funny. Uh, I can't help but think about my own career as I listen to you talk because I think the probably the most enjoyable parts of my career have been training others to, to be better at what they're doing. And uh, when I look at your card, training evolved. Kudos to you for creating something that's going to help people be better. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for the opportunity today, and it's a pleasure to be here in person. Oh, well, listen, it was a wonderful conversation here on Making Waves. Modest Trees making a difference, and uh, I, I keep going back, you know, occasionally throughout my conversations over the last couple of weeks. Admiral Brian Centarpia talked about service, yeah. and, uh, and oftentimes we think of service of people in uniform, but he flipped it on its head to us, and certainly he did last night at the gala dinner, and that the people in this room are serving, they're serving their country, they're making this a better industry, they're providing better solutions to our country to make it a better, safer place, and you're a big part of that, Emily, and so thank you very much for what it is that you do. We certainly appreciate it. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure. Thanks.